Hello everyone, this is Audio Dread, and today I wanted to do a little bit different of a video. I wanted to just kind of uh, hang out with you guys, show you something cool, and tell a little story. And I've also got some other announcements that uh, I won't get too long-winded on, but that are very exciting. Anyone, uh, I'm going to start with those because they're relevant to the present situation. Uh, anyone who watched the Sound Effects Guy Challenge Number 7 live stream. He mentioned that I am working on a game, um, and I am doing all the sound design for it. The name of it is Spiritborn. It is an indie ARPG that is uh, very skill-based, has or is going to have a variety of classes, some interesting enemies, uh, really good graphics, really good gameplay. My sounds, which I like to think are very well done, um, my sounds are not implemented yet. That being said, if you have any questions about it, uh, you want to learn anything about it, feel free to message me directly. We also now have an official Spiritborn Discord, which I'm uh, always active on anytime someone wants to come and chat. Uh, the link to that will be down in the description, and in that Discord there is a link to a Drive document that contains a build of the game as it stands right now that you can play for yourself. It's not super in-depth yet, but it does have some gameplay, and we would love to hear your feedback. Again, my sounds aren't in it yet, uh, but the game's still very fun to play, and I enjoy it quite a bit. So in light of that, I have this old, decrepit, dilapidated laptop that I've had for so long, and uh, when I first started working on this game, I work a job, a day job, where I spend a decent amount of time in a security office watching video cameras, so I have a lot of downtime. And in order to have more time to work on sound design things, I am also somewhat of a computer nerd. I brought this laptop back to life. It had been broken for three years. I finally took the time to fix it up. I wouldn't say it runs well, but for the purposes of Audacity, it runs fine. Uh, as a result of that, I made a very, very cool discovery, and that is the very first time that I ever sound designed anything. Uh, I started developing this game that I still plan to develop. I don't know when that will happen, but you'll definitely hear about it when it does. Um, a horror game that's very much sound driven. And for that game, I created an ambience. And uh, it was actually a complete accident. But what's really interesting is that this was the moment, the accident, that started my entire journey into uh, pursuing a career in sound design. It was the first time I ever did a horror ambience. It was the first time I designed a sound, period. And it was on that old laptop that I thought all of that would be lost forever, but when I revived it, it was actually still there, so I got all of that work back. So I just want to show this to you guys because I think it's really interesting, and I think it's cool that I'm able to show the very first work that I ever did. Um, there were three versions of this. I'm going to show you the final version because the other two were just kind of drafts. And this is what I ultimately came up with. So, um, right. I had an interesting style, and there's a lot of things that I did that I would do different now. And that's actually something I'm going to, I'm going to toss it in here, and I'm going to try to recreate this knowing what I know now, and see how it turned out different, if it's any different. So this is the original sound. Um, oops. Now, keep in mind, uh, this was before I started focusing on Creative Commons Zero, so this does have an attribution on it. Um, so, Sarah Sprilla, I think. Um, I will be finding the sound and linking it in the description, so make sure and go credit where credit's due. Give them the credit that they deserve. So I'm just going to solo this out really quick. And uh, I was looking for a door sound. And the, the really funny thing is that that's all I was trying to do was create a horror-esque creaking door. At this point, and to this day, I have never 
looked at a tutorial, I've never watched a YouTube video, I have never learned how to use Audacity in any manner other than hitting buttons until something does what I want it to do. And that's why my style is a little different and why I can do things with Audacity that a lot of people wouldn't know how to do is because I essentially learned how to break the program by just randomly trying things for years. So this is what I started with. So what you have is just a very long door creak. And here is what I turned it into. Ah. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, for a first sound, not bad. Knowing what I know now, there's a few things wrong with it. One, it doesn't fade out all the way, so there's a little bit of clipping as it transitions right here. But getting a fade to zero in Audacity is actually tricky, so I can't even fault my young self for that. I actually think that that can be left as is because that doesn't seem to be causing much clipping. But I think that this needs to fade out a little more. Uh, still a little bit of clipping there. Gonna make sure that these hit zero. Okay, that's still clipping a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it down a bit more and then do that. And that still doesn't fade out enough. Because you want just a tiny fade out, and that's hard to do. There we go. Now, the other thing that I noticed is that, um, depending on what you're listening to this on, it will sound like the, or feel like the bass is blowing your head off. It is, um, I don't... I don't remember my thought process, but I think I just thought that more bass meant scarier. Um, so what I'm going to do now... So I improved on this a little bit. Here, we can get that out of there. Um, I'm going to save this as a different draft, just so that I don't lose this. Even though it's a very minor change. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a fresh Audacity project and I'm going to try to recreate this knowing what I know now and see how it turns out different, see if it's better, see if it's worse. My style's definitely evolved over the years, so let's just see where this goes. So the first thing that I, I know that I did and I always do is slow it down. And that's every ambience that I make with not every, 99.8% of all scary ambiences that I make are started by slowing it down, and I usually start at negative 50%, just to give me a baseline. I can already tell that's not enough, so we're just gonna repeat that, another negative 50. 
and the other thing this is how um, inexperienced I was when I first made the sound I didn't know what normalize did <laughs> and I am um, so I kept having to adjust the levels of like reverb that I put on so that it wouldn't peak because I didn't know that there was an easy way to just set it to zero <laughs> and um I didn't understand that if you added a reverb and it wasn't right and then you added a reverb again it was reverbing the reverb and it wasn't just adjusting the settings that you had already put on and I thought, thought the same thing with speed so I did some funky things before I figured that out um so I should have a much easier time with it now that I have an entire YouTube video dedicated to this stuff or YouTube channel. So I would say that's actually a little too slow. So I'm just going to backtrack and I'm going to change the speed by negative 25%. See where that gets me. Normalize, should normalize it before I did that since I might end up redoing it again. So now I understand reverb a lot better than I did then. So what I'm going to do is a little double reverb trick that I do on a lot of my sounds where I add some reverse and then I add some forward on top of the reverse, which means that the reverse gets reverbed forward as well. Um, and I'm just going to generate some silence so that it has plenty of room to fade out. And let's see, room size is good, keep reverberance at 100, we want all of both, but I am going to turn the wet gain down to 6, because it does tend to compromise the sort of structure of the sound, and I don't want that. So I'm going to apply that, normalize it. Ended up with way more silence than I needed, but it's much better too much than not enough. So I'm just going to trim that off. And then I'm going to reverse it again. Oops. So there we have a nice fade in. I'm liking this better than the original. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to do the same thing forward facing, but we're going to turn the wet up to 10. So this is what I like to call the everything reverb. It's where you just crank everything up, um, which is good for horror. It's not good for anything else because Audacity's reverb's not the best. actually is a bit too intense. I like the reverb, but there's a bit too much of it. You can't hear the original sound enough. So I'm going to actually do that again, but I'm going to turn the, re the reverberance down to 60. 
and see if that helps keep the structure of it a little better because this was designed with a setting in mind. Uh, so this was really good for just one of my normal videos, but the setting that it was supposed to be, which is kind of a pieced together complex sort of thing made out of scrap, it's a kind of a, a cult building is what I was basing this off of. And so the, re the, uh, the ambience itself is meant to just be creepy and unsettling, but it's also meant to be like the walls are creaking and the structure's a little unstable. It's supposed to sound like the building isn't quite steady. So that much reverb makes it sound a little too synthetic. Don't know why it's taking so long. God, it's taking forever to apply this reverb. I swear my computer is not this slow. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now we're gonna normalize this. Trim off the end so that it doesn't have such a hard time. So I'm liking that significantly better. The reason why the original had two different sections is because I wanted to put different reverb on each one because as it gets to the end, it gets a lot deeper and particularly this spot at the end. It gets really low, but I have some other tricks up my sleeve that I know now that I didn't know then that might be able to uh, fix that a little bit. So the first thing that I'm curious of is if this area just being louder so because it's hard to tell if it's too deep or if it's too quiet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring this up to zero decibels. So it is pretty low. I'm gonna undo that. So there's a couple different things that need to happen there, but first off, the entire thing actually is a bit high. And now before, I just fixed that by cranking the bass up because I thought that that was the most efficient way. Now I know that pitch shift is actually a thing. Um, I'm not gonna use high quality stretching because all it really does is keep the length the same and make it sound a lot more synthetic. So I'll deal with it, making it a little bit longer in exchange for having a good pitch shift. amazing how much of a difference 5% pitch can make. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to pitch shift this area up and we're going to see if that doesn't completely mess up the entire thing. Okay, so that sounds ridiculous. So we're not going to do it that way. What we're going to do is we're going to do a sliding pitch where we're going to start at zero and we're going to end at 10. OK. 
Okay, and now we're going to take this. And we're just going to make it a little louder. So that last little bit at the end is nice. Now what we can do is we can try to normalize that a little higher and just see if it doesn't completely mess it up. Okay, so there is a little bit of clipping there. Now the question is, can we just draw it out? This generally has about a 50-50 chance of working. Because uh, it's still a very sharp curve. That's still some clipping. Okay. So instead of that, we're going to normalize it to negative three and see, okay, still a little too much. I think it's probably, yeah, it's a bit above that already. Just want this to get a little bit louder. Okay, that caused a little bit of clipping, but it was a small enough amount that I might actually be able to fix it with the draw tool. Just smooth this out a little bit. And let's see. Nope, okay. I'm sure that there are better ways to do that, but I do not know what they are. Again, I am 100% self-taught, so go ahead in the comments, anyone who knows Audacity better than I do, how you would deal with that. Um, yeah, let's see. There's a little bit of clipping there already which there shouldn't be because the scale starts at zero, so it should be merging just fine. If I start it where it's already quiet. It should fade together perfectly fine. Let's see, right there it did cause a tiny bit of clipping, but a small enough amount because it's already so quiet that if I just poorly smooth this out real quick. Other thing that I can try Audacity's repair tool is not great, but it will sometimes get the job done. Ah, you have to select such a small section. Trying to just get as much of this as possible, and I don't know exactly what 128 samples looks like, so I'm just gonna keep reducing by a little bit until I get it. Because banging my head against the wall is the way that I do sound design. Alright, there we go. That did 
seem to help. So now, if I just bring the volume up as high as I reasonably can. All right, I think that is about as much as I can do for that. Um, There you have it. So that is what my first sound design sounds like if I did it today. Um, let me know in the comments below which one you liked better. And while you're down there, make sure and check out the Discord server for Spiritborn. And also uh, check out Sarah Sprella. Give the credit that uh, they deserve. And... I think that's all I have for you today, so until next time, I've been Audio Dread, and I hope to see you in the next video.